The Odojim, consisting of only 5,000 characters, has long been considered one of the most difficult classics to comprehend in Chinese traditional culture. For thousands of years, there have been countless legends and speculations surrounding Odza and the Odojim. So, what kind of insights can interpreting the Odojim bring to us? In this instance, we are going to delve into Laozi is Aldo Jing, which offers several paths for interpretation. The Aldo Jing is vast. No matter which aspect you approach it from, there are numerous paths to explore. Hence, it is said that all roads lead to the Aldo Jing. So, which path should we choose this time? Because depending on the path you take, what you see will differ. Therefore, this time, we'll opt for a less trodden path, one that offers a broader perspective. Let's take a historical view. Before Emperor Jing of Western Han, it wasn't called the Aodou Jim. At that time, there was no term like the Aodou Jim. It was simply called Aodzi, signifying a book written by Laozi, indicating it hadn't gained general consensus. However, Emperor Jing of Han deemed this Laozi incredibly remarkable. He believed it shouldn't be called Zi, but should be elevated in status, hence referred to as Dim, classic. The team is not easily attained. It should not be arbitrarily altered and must be adhered to consistently. Moreover, it holds solemnity. When the book written by Vozo was elevated to the status of Zim, its influence on the Chinese people became even more profound. In the Tang Dynasty, Emperor Xuanzong honored the Aodou Jim as the Jin Jim, true classic, further elevating its status. We often tend to believe that in this world, everything is either true or false. However, Aodou tells us through the Aodou Jim, that everything in this world is neither entirely true nor false. Rather, it is both true and false. But how can truth and falsehood, being entirely relative, coexist? If one has read the Ijim, one might easily understand from its concepts that there is a part that is true and a part that is false. Truly true aspects are scarce, as are those that are false. What predominates is neither entirely true nor false, but both true and false. Consequently, many people begin to find it confusing. If both truth and falsehood are rare, what should we call the predominant aspect? Described in a single Chinese character, it is called Shi. Therefore, when reading Aodzi's book, it's crucial to remember that amidst truth and falsehood, there exists something called Shi. The vast majority of people believe in what their eyes actually see, which is the Shi. But is it really true? In fact, most of it is not true because within the spectrum of natural light, there are so many colors, and we can only perceive a portion of them. Many parts are invisible to us. The functionality of our eyes is limited. Hence, our eyes often deceive us. The Lao Tzu told us thousands of years ago that what we see with our eyes is not always true. Hence, we must clarify something. After many people read the Lao Tzu Jing, they might think that the Taoist tradition is deceptive, that Lao Tzu harbored deceitful intentions. Consequently, upon finishing the Lao Tzu Jing, they become unethical, and this situation is rather serious. This time, we must address this issue. Otherwise, wouldn't it be unjust for Lao Tzu? We can now see that the influence Lao Tzu has given us is also yin yi yang, both positive and negative. This demonstrates that the root of Chinese culture lies in the Yijim. The Lao Tzu represents the highest level of interpretation in the Yijim, which guides us on how to conduct ourselves. However, many of our explorations yield negative outcomes which is a source of frustration for Laozi. It's also the reason why we didn't start with the Aodou Jing this time. We must first unearth these foundational aspects, those long misunderstood and even destructive elements. After clarifying these, we can then approach Laozi with a correct mindset. That's the work we need to do this time. So, this time, after truly understanding the Aodou Jing, we should be able to minimize these negative impacts. Look, Lao Tzu only wrote a little over 5,000 characters. Of course, this is yet another case. Chinese people say Dao De Jing comprises 5,000 characters. If measured by Western standards, it must be precisely 5,000 characters. Any fluctuation is deemed unauthentic. But Chinese conventions differ. Hence, when we mention Lao Tzu is work consisting of 5,000 characters, we understand there's some flexibility. It could be slightly fewer or more. Therefore, there are numerous versions of the Aodou Jim. Today, and one that precisely contains 5,000 characters ironically be improbable. Certainly, it's regrettable that the Aodou Jim, handwritten by Aodou is lost. Whether its absence is good or bad, that's worth pondering. It may not necessarily be good, 
nor necessarily bad. That's just how it is. So, now that we've reached this point, it's clear that when reading the Aodo Jim, the first thing we need to do is self-examination. We often judge based on our own understanding, this is right, that is wrong. However, we must remember that our understanding itself might be flawed. If your standards are incorrect, can what you conclude be correct? Therefore, we must approach the Aodo Jim with a calm, respectful, and sincere attitude. We should read it thoroughly and then introspect. Instead of using my perspective to judge Laza right or wrong, we are not here to criticize Laza. There's no need for that. We are here to understand why he wrote these 5,000 characters. We need to comprehend the Laza of that time and context rather than imagining Laza through our present lens. That would not be appropriate. The Laza lived in the era of the spring and autumn and the Warring States period, a time of great division in Chinese history, where various schools of thought emerged, collectively termed Zhuzabaijia. Each school in the Zhuzabaijia was highly knowledgeable, but they held different positions. However, Aldzad observed that this diversity led to much contention. Everyone spoke their own truths, resulting in constant conflict. As we discuss this, it should become apparent that our current era isn't far removed from Aldzad's. It is diverse, with everyone claiming to be right. Who is truly correct? No one knows, leading to ongoing conflicts. So the Aldzad was quite distressed. He couldn't stand it anymore so he wanted to speak the truth. However, speaking the truth could also survive? History tells us that those who speak the truth either don't survive or don't survive for long. What could be done? Hence, he planned to leave his place of work. When leaving, he probably anticipated someone trying to detain him, preventing his departure. If Saozad insisted on leaving, he would be asked to leave behind his valuable insights. At this moment, he seized the opportunity, took a risk, spoke the truth, then departed, leaving no trace for others to follow. When understanding the birth of the Daodajim, from this perspective, we surmise that Alza might be quite pleased, as we finally understand what he was talking about and why he chose to speak in such a manner. It's said that Confucius admiring Alza's knowledge went with his disciples to exchange ideas. When Alza saw Confucius, he didn't speak but simply opened his mouth, showing his flawed teeth and intact tongue. While the disciples were puzzled, Confucius grasped Laozi's as meaning. Though teeth may be strong, they can be incomplete. However, the tongue, though weak, remains intact. Therefore, we can discern that Laozi's philosophy emphasizes weakness and softness. He understood that even the strongest things will one day become incomplete, while the gentle and weak can intact. Hence, Laozi's philosophy distinctly tells us that softness prevails over strength. At this point, I believe everyone is eagerly anticipating understanding the Aodo Jim, but wanting to know what truths laws are really conveyed. So, where should we start? I'm sure many of you already grasped the idea. It's from the very first sentence, Al Kodal, Fei Chamdal. The laws are placed it there for a reason. Therefore, our next step is to discuss why the Dal Kodal, Fei Chamdal. We are about to delve into Laozi's thinking. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out on more exciting content in the future. If you have any questions, suggestions, or want to share your thoughts, please leave your comments in the section below. I look forward to hearing from you.